Hey guys, I'm back again this time with three easy vegan lunch ideas. If you missed my breakfast video, that will be linked below. And I really can't stress how easy these are, like I wouldn't even call them recipes, they're more just like assembly instructions. So hopefully you will find something that you like and something that you might want to try out for yourself. So with that said, let's get started. So this quinoa bowl is something I like to make when I am ravenously hungry and it also travels really well. I like to make up my quinoa in my rice cooker. You could definitely use rice or whatever grain you prefer. And I like to make up a little bit more than I need so that I have enough for a couple of days. And then once your quinoa or rice is done, just take a couple of scoops into the bowl, um, depending on how much you want to eat. And now you are ready to add your toppings. So this will obviously vary depending on what you prefer or what you have available to you, but it's a great way of using ingredients up too. So I'm gonna add some kale. Arugula is also really nice on this. I'm also gonna add some avocado because obviously. I'm then using some of these kind of breaded vegan shrimp, but you can use whatever fake meat or not. And then I have some kind of anti-pasty stuff, so some beans and some artichokes and stuff like that. And then I just have some chopped cherry tomatoes and some chopped Kalamata olives. And as far as dressings go, you can obviously make your own if you want, but I love Annie's Goddess dressing, so I'm gonna go with that. So let's get started. First of all, you're gonna to want to fully massage and relax your kale before you can eat it, otherwise it tastes like crap. So I use a little bit of olive oil and just a little grind of salt and then massage it. Take your rings off first. So if you don't like kale and you've never tried it this way, definitely give it a go. And then once your kale seems a little bit more relaxed, you're gonna dump it on top of the quinoa and start adding everything else. And I feel like everyone has a very different avocado style, so let me know what yours is down below. And then I'm adding our fake meat type stuff. I think these are from Sophie's Kitchen. The olives and the tomatoes, and then we're gonna chuck the antipasti bits and pieces on top too. And then I'm gonna add our dressing. You can chuck some seeds or nuts or whatever you want on top as well, and you're ready to devour this. Definitely a great option if you are just ravenously hungry. You can customize it for everyone, and it's just a really great way to fill up your belly. So the next option is just a good old-fashioned BLT. And it's pretty obvious what the ingredients are because it's in the name, so I'm not going to go into it too much. So usually I will start prepping things while Adam is doing the bacon, but you can definitely do this by yourself too. So I just slice up the tomato. And then I'm a little bit of a lettuce brat, so I like to take the stalks out of the lettuce, otherwise it makes me a little bit angry. And then once you have mayoed your bread, I really like to use the Just Mayo brand, by the way, you are ready to start assembling it. And then once our Upton Naturals brand bacon is ready, this is definitely our favorite, you are ready to add that on there too. Then I like to add a little bit of black pepper and you're ready to eat. So you can enjoy this with soup if you want to, throw some chips on the side, or just put it in a Tupperware box and take it to work with you. Yum. And then lastly, we're gonna make this noodle soup, which is great for at home or on the go. So you will need a container to make it in if you're doing this on the go. I would really recommend using something other than this because it's not very watertight, but anything with a hinge lid should be fine. And then for the base of the soup, you're gonna need something that will go with the rest of your ingredients. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this no beef base as well as some of their vegetable one. You're then gonna want some dry noodles that cook very easily. So ideally the cellophane ones are perfect. 
So because I decided to do a kind of pho inspired soup, I'm also going to add in some of this No Evil Foods prepper, which is like a fake chicken. You could use a different fake meat or mushrooms, whatever you prefer. I'm also going to add in some bean sprouts. These just add a nice little crunch. And then you're going to need some other toppings. So in here I have jalapenos, cilantro, green onions and some lime to squeeze in as well. If you're making these for work, keep this part separate. And then obviously it wouldn't be a noodle soup without some sriracha, so I put a little bit of this in the soup as well as a bunch on top afterwards. And now we are ready to assemble. So I always start by adding whatever stock I'm using first. Like I said, I'm going to use part beef and part vegetable, very vegan, but a curry base is also really good for certain soups too. Then we're going to add our ramen noodles. Like I said, these cellophane ones are better just because they cook quicker, but I do think these are a little bit heartier and just better for certain soups. Then we're going to add our faux chicken pieces. I just cut these up roughly and stick them in however they fit. Then we're going to chuck in our bean sprouts as well. And I forgot to mention this before, but I'm using a chunk of ginger in a garlic press just to get a lot of the flavor out because grating ginger is a pain in my ass. Then we're going to add the jalapenos, the cilantro, and the, what were they, spring onions? As well as squeezing in the lime, and then I just chuck the whole thing in afterwards as well. Then I do a few blobs of sriracha, and you are essentially ready to go if you are going to take this to work with you or wherever. And it should look something like this. Now you could arrange it a bit more Pinteresty, but, you know, I'm lazy. So then once you're ready to eat it, all you need to do is add some boiling water, put the lid back on and then let it sit for a while until your noodles look more noodly. And then once your noodleization has occurred, give it a good stir to mix the broth in and then you can enjoy it from the jar or put it in a bowl if you want to. Delicious. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I will be back next time with three easy dinner ideas. So if you have any requests or comments you want to leave, leave them below. Give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Hopefully you're not too hungry now.